Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken's Training. Today's uh, training is going to be on installing a light fixture in a brand new location. So I'm going to come behind the camera there and show you the job. Okay. Uh, today's job is going to be adding a light fixture in this ceiling area right here. You see how there's no light fixtures up in this ceiling? That is a smoke detector right there. And then otherwise it's pretty dark. Now there is a light here which takes you into the front entryway from the, from the front doors. But then once you get beyond that it's pretty dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a light fixture approximately here in the ceiling. So there's nothing there, no power, no box, nothing. We have to introduce everything in order to make that happen. Now, looking at the job, uh, the bathroom is right here, and there is a light fixture right here. Uh, not a light fixture, just a light switch. Uh, and, and the exhaust fan as well. Now that's powered from circuit breaker number nine so we'll go look at circuit breaker number nine to see what the amperage is to determine what wire gauge minimum size we need to run. Now you see how thick this wall is right here? This is a regular four inch wall plus more and the reason why is because there's a a, a return air duct right here. Now what I'm thinking about doing is uh, installing the light switch approximately here or installing the light switch approximately here but I'm thinking about taking the power from this switch right here so I'm going to get it from circuit number nine it's the closest power source to my location then once I get that power source I'm going to run it uh, my wire up the wall and then I'm going to come into the ceiling and then uh, I'm going to come over and in, uh, install it to where the box is going to be placed which is approximately right there which will light up this area o over here as well as this seating area right here and this dark spot right over here so it'll kind of hit all areas um, to determine what's going on in that wall I can open this return up and I can look up there, look up there and see what's happening with the flashlight to see what, uh, what I well, need to do. Now the first thing that I want to do also to get started on this job is I want to find out where my studs are located. I don't know which way they run. Do they run this way on the joists or do they run this way? Just looking at the ceiling you don't know. So I have the stud finder here and basically when you come to the yeah, put it up against the wall. I have it set to uh, stud. You can see right there it's on stud scan. So you push the button in here on the side. Okay, that turns it on. First you put it up against the wall. You turn it on. Oh, well, I pulled off from the wall so it gave me an error signal. Slide it against the wall. Okay, right there is a stud. So I'll mark the beginning on both sides and then that should be the stud. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the ceiling. Well, when I come over to here, I'm just going to run it up across, put some blue tape to mark where this, which way the studs are located so I can figure out how many holes I need to drill, how much, how much of that ceiling I need to tear apart to run my wire through. It would be more beneficial for me if the joists run this way because then I don't have to do a penetration every you know, 16 inches or however many inches they ran the joist set. Alright, that's it for now. Thank you. Alright, I'm getting ready to pull off this grill. I was able to get off only two of the screws, this one over here and this one over here. Uh, this one and, and this one over here are giving me a hard time. But one interesting note here is that the painting when it was done here they painted the wall and the grill while it was in place and you can if you can see this this is painted right here um, along the where the grill meets that so if I just take and try to pull that off I'm gonna pull that paint off so what I need to do is I need to take a utility knife and I need to actually score right in here 
so that way I don't pull the paint off. So I have to go around the whole grill and just score that so this way it doesn't pull the paint off. So I just wanted to show you that before I pull this grill off. Okay, I've got the panel, uh, the return air uh, panel removed. Now you can see a couple of studs right there. I got them labeled also right here on the drywall with the blue tape so I know exactly where my studs are located and you can see them right here anyways. Uh, also what that has afforded me to do is it it's allowed me to to look up this way to determine what I am going to be looking at. Now I'm going to see if I can get you that camera angle. This is what the cavity looks like looking up. You can see it's kind of dusty. I'll see if I can vacuum it out. So you can see the box right there that I want to tap into. And also, if you look way up high, beyond that conduit, that flex metal conduit right there, beyond that, a little hard for you to see, but there's going up towards the air handler up there. So what I did was is I took a tape measure and I measured from the bottom here all the way to the top and it measures out at 88 inches. Then what I did was is I, I measured from the top ceiling height here to the same point of the location here and it measured out at 78 inches so there's a 10 inch difference so what's happening is is I'm going to assume that the, the joists up here are 10 inches also there's no like stop or anything there so the the wire can run freely up that way so what I need to do is I need to cut a hole in the ceiling and to bring the wire down the wall to connect onto that junction box another thing is is that because this is a return air uh, duct, I'm also going to have to uh, encase that Romex into a um, flexible metal housing or ironclad housing. Um, Alright, so that's one thing I'm going to have to do. So I need to get a hole up here in order to bring the wire down. Also, I'm going to vacuum out inside here a little bit, make it the job a little bit neater. Another thing is, is that these are the screws that held in the, um, uh, the, 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 the grate. They used a couple different styles here and they're kind of painted over. The, you never want to use a flat bladed screw because uh, the, the uh, screwdriver and the drill just walks off of it. This one's not so bad, a hex head screw, but it's kind of painted. So I'll see if I can't get uh, four good ones of these hex head ones to replace it with. All right, so that's on that job. I checked out the breaker. The breaker is rated at 15 amps. So technically the wire that I need to run is only 14 AWG. Although I like to do most of my work in 15. I figured out on the ceiling, on the joists, that they are running this way according to my stud finder. So once I get up into the ceiling over here, I have to go through one joist, or actually two joists, because I was going to put it in between here and here. Because uh, uh, ultimately, I wanted the fixture to reside approximately here. I, right about there would be perfect, so it's going to be just about touching this joist right here. So I have to figure out what type of a box I want to put up into the ceiling. I, I might do a, a larger hole here and attach right to that stud, uh, that joist rather, right there <clears throat> for my ceiling mount. Um, Alright, so that's where I'm at so far. Okay, I've confirmed that we're going to install the fixture where the X is located uh, right, right there. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to drill holes 
to verify that the studs are located here and uh, try to do with the uh, angle that I'm at here right there okay so that's what I'm going to do right now uh, I've got my sharp vac over here and I'm, um, I'm ready to uh, turn the sharp vac on and I've got a uh, coat hanger right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit which is uh, about a, it's a little 7 sixteenths bit and I'm going to then use this coat hanger just to verify the studs. I'm going to turn the shop back on so it's going to get noisy for a second while I drill the holes. So I'm going to get you up on the ceiling there and I'm going to put the shop back on because I, I want as little dust as possible. I'm going to drill a couple of small holes and here we go. that uh, the studs are exactly where I said they were. So I'm going to take this. Okay, so I'm stopping right there. Come back. And yes, there's a stud right there. Go back the other way. Put a little bend into that so it kind of bends over. That's stopping right there, and that's right there. So, indeed, these are my studs. Now I'm just going to verify that I have nothing going on this way. All right, now I'm going to do two more drill holes going the other way just to verify that. This time I'll put the drill. So now I'm just going to go back this way to verify that there's nothing going on there. And there's not. Feels pretty open. And not that I need it, but I'll just go back this way. Okay. Everything feels good. Okay. So as far as this goes, I'm probably going to end up purchasing uh, a ceiling fan uh, box because I'm going to install it. Let me come off the cradle here. Uh, okay. What I can do here, uh, let me just get some focus. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in between these two joists, I'm just going to use a ceiling fan box to go in between here. That'll work out fine. So that means that I'm going to have a hole here in the ceiling the size of a, an octagon. I don't know, about three and a half, three and a half, four by four four inches by four inches approximately. So I know I'm going to put that in the ceiling right there. That's probably half inch drywall. I'll confirm that in a few moments. Um, so where I'm going to need my to do most of my drywall holes is following this chase going right up the center right at the wall here in this ceiling. I'm going to have to open this up because uh, I'm going to need to drill down and I I'll need to go across two two studs, that stud and that stud, in order to bring it into this, the wire into this chase right here. So I know that I'm going to have that going on for me. So most of my, my drywall openings is going to be right in this area. Now the fixture that I'm going to install is going to look pretty much just like this one here, which is just a two light bulb flush mounted uh, fixture. And you can see here in this closet, 
when it's off it's on it emits pretty good light so I uh, think that will satisfy the the needs of what we're trying to accomplish if I didn't like the fixture for any reason I'll have the box the wire and everything up in the ceiling and it won't be an issue to change that out and those are in those that light fixture I'm talking about is inexpensive um, okay so the the next step for me now is to go ahead and open this wall up uh, ceiling up over here uh, so I can figure out the chase of my wires how I'm going to bring that across okay I decided the hole that I'm going to cut up here in the ceiling right here is going to be 24 inches by 5 inches that'll give me enough space to put my drill and to drill in across the two studs which run here and here okay so I want to be approximately in the center of this chase here so about there for the center point so um, I can start just just to the just to the side of this and I want to be 24 inches uh, over which is exactly this square right here is 24 inches from here to here so I can decide how I want that to land now I need to go through three holes there's going to be a some type of a wall here I got to penetrate into this joist here and this joist here so I gotta make sure that I have enough room in order to do all three penetrations so I think I'll probably go about like this and I'm hoping that that there will be enough room for me to do everything I needed to do um, so that's the uh, that's the intention of what I'm trying to accomplish so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'll go square to my wall here and I'll use that as my line okay so there's that now uh, in case you didn't see it let's see here there's my lines that my cutout lines that I'm going to be cutting into right there all right just wanted to show you that real quick all right. all right there's the hole that I opened up and I didn't know it at the time but there's actually two studs here and the one stud here and it's pretty much in line with the blue tape that I had uh, originally had lined up now I can do I do see some existing Romex that kind of hanging down supported a little bit there uh, a very small thin wire right there I don't know what that one's doing I do not know and then another Romex wire and then some other wire here alright so I gotta go into that wood right there to bring me down the wall I got to come across, drill through these two joists here, and then come up here. So the wire is going to come here, through here, through here, and then turn and go that way to my X over there. Way over there. That's where my light fixture is going to go. Um, now, what else? Uh, Okay, so can I get my drill in there to do what I need to do? Uh, probably. I don't think I'm going to have an issue. Um, this is the piece that I took out. Uh, I took it out pretty gently. I didn't know it at the time, but it happened to be right where there's a seam, where two um, pieces of drywall originally came together the seam is still intact and the piece is still intact uh, so my intention is going to be to keep this thing looking nice and I'm just going to go ahead and try to reinstall it um, in the exact same location so this will be my filler piece to go uh, right back in there so I'm going to keep this out of the way so I don't step on it or damage it in any way 
and then that will go back up there and then it's just patching and painting all right I've got a slight change of plans here originally I was going to put the light switch right about here which is on the right hand side of the bathroom door and that would have made it pretty easy because I've already got that chase opened up because of removing this panel but it's going to be better to have the light switch where this X is located right there uh, which means that what I'm gonna have to do I've already put the stud finder and it looks like there's a stud from here over to the wall and then there's the next stud so this is the the opening or the wall cavity that's opened here so it looks like what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to do another opening right here in order to chase that wire down uh, the wall to that X um, so it's more work but I think it's going to be much more beneficial so that way if you're over here at the um, in the doorway opening and you want to operate the light which is going to be right there instead of walking over on the opposite side over here you'll have the light switch right here it's just going to be easier to operate oh look who's joined us that's new that's little Milo here he is oh and here's Tigo hey Tigo all right so I just wanted to show you the updates to the program that also changes the wiring now let me take you over here and show you the new wiring diagram uh, the old wiring diagram was the power to the light switch over to the light now it's going to be the power it's going to come up it's going to drop down into the light fixture junction box then I'm going to run another conductor over to the new light switch so it's it's uh, more work it's also more in materials because instead of me just needing a little run from here to here which which would have been a very short run I have to go down the wall here and so use some more product and I gotta do a new opening but it's going to be much more beneficial over here when I run the two uh, the conductors what I'll do is I'll run the black to the hot side of the switch on the traveler side of the switch it'll be I'll use the because it's a white black and uh, green uh, Romex what I'll do is I'll take the white wire and wrap it with red indicating it's a traveling wire uh, com coming back and powering on that switch right there um, that uh, light fixture I mean okay so that's those are the main differences so far I just wanted to give you an update alright just to give you an update I've already cut the hole right there for the um, for the ceiling box. I'm getting ready to put the uh, hole in f uh, to cut in for the light switch. Now the way that I've done that is there's a light switch right over here. I measured from the floor up and it was 41 and 3 quarters of an inch to the center of that switch. So over here I measured from the floor up and that one is um, uh, 41 and 3 fourths so it'll be exactly the same height. I started to drill a, a hole a little bit higher by, by accident so I, I lowered that. Now that's going to be the center of this box right here. That's the ultimate goal right there with, where that's going to land. Now I checked with my stud finder and I've already determined that there should not be a stud here. There's a stud right here and the next stud over is over here. So, what I've done is, is, let me show you how I did this. What I did is, is I took the box and I went from the, from the center of the box to the furthest of how deep that's going to go in the wall and I made myself this small little coat hook right here. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole, a half inch hole right here, and then I'm going to put that in and I'm going to see how well that does. So, let me come back. Alright, uh, I'm gonna let me uh, drill that hole and I'll be right back because I'm gonna put the vacuum on it and everything. Okay, there we are. I've just drilled the hole. I did not hit anything. Now I'm just gonna put in my deal here and I'm just going to spin that around just to verify that I got a good open cavity there. And I do. So that's going to work out just fine. So now what I'm gonna do is to cut this hole out. The way to do it is to 
take my level, put that on there, get in the center of the hole, center of the box, center that out, make sure that you're level. Alright, hold on. I'm just, I'm just going to eyeball it because it's the level isn't working out so well. So right about like there. I want it to be as tight as possible once I cut this hole out because I want as much drywall here as I possibly can get. Um, in order to to make this this fit because once you screw these in these wings fold over and grab the drywall so it holds the drywall here and it pushes back from the other side anchoring the box I'll use this back knockout in order to run my Romex up the wall uh, rather than a side because it's just easier to put it into the wall this way with not having anything uh, in like that okay so that's where I'm at right now I just wanted to show you, keep you up to date. All right, I cut the second hole, but the problem is, is that for me, in order to run this line to get down to the uh, the thermostat, um, I've got a, a block of wood that I'm looking at right there. That block of wood is going to be a big problem because even if I drill a hole like I did on the other one just going straight through this way I need to intercept and bring that wire down and uh, there's so I'm gonna have to in order for me to do this I'm gonna have to make an opening in the drywall right here so I can see what's going on this way if I have to, if the, I'm assuming there's a top plate that I'm gonna have to drill through so I'll have to drill big enough to put my drill in this way drilling up so that's where I'm at so I can run this wire Okay, I got through and I ran a hole, I ran my drill, I should say, up this way and then one in this way. And then I took a coat hanger, did it up so I can fish the wire and then go through. Once I get my wire on here and attached, I can uh, bring, it, bring it through either way, up or down. And I've already got the uh, cut-in box done. Let me show you that. All right, there's the cut-in box. I already did a, a dry test fit. You see how tight when I cut my hole. I, I want it. I want it to be at an absolute bare minimum so that it just grabs as much drywall as possible. And on this box, the way that they have it with these wings, I had to do it just like that. It should work out fine. All right, so my next step is to uh, start. Uh, pulling wire here real soon. I just got to uh, work uh, one more section over there on the um, conduit and then I'll pull wire. Alright, I've got a conduit run inside the wall here that's go that goes all the way up. It's half inch EMT is the, way, is the way that I did it. Now, I found some extra 14-2 wire which is okay because I'm connected to a 15 amp breaker, not a 20 amp breaker. And that particular piece is 15 feet, and I measured out the run that I need. The first run is 15 feet, so it should just make it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, my cable snake, and I'm going to run that right there up the half-inch EMT, and then pull the wire down. So I'm going to pan back here, see if I can show you uh, me doing that job right now. Alright, so on this one here, the way I like to do it is, first I'm going to pull out my cable. I'll just leave this on the ground. Then, I'll feed this through, and then up, and I should see it poke out the other end. Okay, I don't want to twist my, my cable here. So I've got to come up here. Actually, it's pretty tight. And it's high up there, so I'm going to have to get in here to do this. Okay, 
there. I'm in the, I'm in the half inch EMT and I'm going up. And I, there it is, it's out already. Okay. So now we've got to run to come down. Alright, so let's see if I can show you that on uh, the camera. Okay, so you saw that I went in there with the cable snake, the, and then there is the cable snake coming out of the uh, ceiling. So now I need to attach one end of the um, of the deal right there. I'll show you that. Okay. Uh, okay, so I need to attach one end here to this here so I can pull it down and black electrical tape. Alright. Now we got two wires here. Hopefully it's not going to be a bad pull. I'd like to grab both of these if I can. Okay, I got them. Alright, and then I'll bring these back upon the, each other. I want this to be as small as possible. I'm going to put that bend up higher because I need that to go through a half inch EMT which is a small opening. So I, I don't have much room here. So I'm trying to keep this tight. Alright, so now just to make sure it doesn't come apart on me I'll see if I can't give it a, a wrap or two of this black electrical tape. Same thing, just keeping it tight. That's it. I went very little with that because I don't want a big bubble there. All right, I'm going to feed that in by hand. Now, for all I know, the thing will go down the whole way. If it got hung up, I would have the snake in order to help pull. All right, so I'm going to keep going. It looks like I don't need. I didn't even need the snake. Look at that. It came out all on its own. Now, I need to get that wire over to here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I came out down the bottom right there. But what I, I don't, I'm going to leave that attached uh, because I still need to um, run that cable across the ceiling here. So let me try to see if I can't just fish that through. And I can pull that up. If I need to, I'll pull that down because this is just going to make my 15 feet. I've already drilled my holes here in my uh, joists. Okay, so let's go through the first joist. Okay. And, I got a pass button. All right. And now I'm going to go through the second joist. <laughs> <laughs> going to be enough so I need to pull that back some more which is fine so I gave myself enough room on the other side all right I'm going to keep going until I make sure I have enough okay that's not that bad right wrong. there oh no Actually, I will have to use the snake. There's a fire stop. I didn't see it here earlier. There's a fire stop here, so I will have to cable back that way. Uh, I won't be able to feed the cable just by itself. Okay, so I'm going to have to uh, disconnect my cable on this end over here in the wall, and I'll attach that or bring it through the box at least so I don't lose that wire. And then I'll disconnect that snake and then I'll, I'll bring it through and I'll try that. Alright, it turns out that there was no blocking in 
this wall cavity, this one there was going this way, so this one here, I was able to chase the wire from the end over here through this way and then over there. So now all I need to do, let me just pan back here so you can see. So now all I need to do is drill with my spade bit uh, right here. Okay, so now all I need to do is drill with this uh, with this drill right here with that with that bit. Uh, let's see, I got on a 7 8 of an inch, which should be fine. And I just have to drill through these three joists. And then I only have to put plates here, here, and here. Because uh, otherwise I'd have to put plates on that side and put plates here too to protect that wire. So, um, so I'm going to be fine. Uh, I'll drill these out right now. Okay, I got the wire through to right there ready to drop in the hole. Now I'm going to mount the box. And... This here is the box. It's going to go uh, attached to this bracket here. This just sits on the drywall and then this attaches to the box up there. So first thing I need to do is mount this. Uh, I got a uh, wrench to turn this uh, once I get past hand tight just to keep it nice and snug and I got a nice opening here to make sure that I'm not pinching any wires there is a conductor right there there's nothing on this side but I want to make sure that everything's nice and clean so you just go in I should make sure you know which way you're going to turn and so I need to turn this way to extend it out which, looking this way, would be clockwise. Okay, so that's no problem. So I'm going to go up, bring it across. Now I have this extra hole, but normally you're only working with just this one hole. So you, this, this box is made to, to work with just the one hole. But uh, since I've got the extra hole, I'll take advantage of it, make my job easier. Okay, now, this bar has to be perfectly centered when you do this. And you turn it clockwise the way I had established when I was down at the ground. And then it's going to dig into the, jo to the joists. Okay, I am not perfectly centered. I'm a little off. Let me move that slightly. Okay. All right. Everything's good here. Okay, that looks really good. Let's try that. Okay, I think I got it. It's digging into the joists nicely. And I'll just go a couple of turns with this. And that will cinch it up real nice. There we go. It should be flat at the bottom, and that isn't moving anywhere. That can hold a ceiling fan, but all I'm holding is a light fixture. I'm not installing a ceiling fan, although this is a ceiling fan mount. Now, bring up your um, box of screws here, and what they've got is uh, quarter inch nylon nuts, so I'm going to have to get me a socket set in order to drive them in, but I can at least start it. So those will be uh, 7 16 So basically this is going to go on the top here. And that should be centered over the holes. Okay, right about there. And then the way the hole pattern is, you got two here and two here. Those two are going to go in here. So the, the box has to go in this way and you'll see with my half inch drywall it sits perfectly just under the drywall as it's supposed to all right so now i'm gonna well actually i can't mount this box just yet what i need to do now is i need to pull my wire through okay so just come through here 
into the box and I got to determine which knockout I'm going to knock out. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll knock out this one because it's a little bit closer to my run. Might as well be as close as possible. So, and then I need to put an, uh, an adapter on this. Let me go grab that. Okay, here's the junction box where I'm going to be taking my power from. This is the new 14 gauge wire that I just ran right there. Now, I got three conductors here. Black, white, and the bare ground. The bare ground is just going to go right here with the other ground. The white is going to go to here. And the black has to go from, from the breaker source into here. Now, that is going to be this black wire right here where it's feeding this switch and this switch here. So this here is where this black wire needs to go. Um, so, and I'm probably going to change my size of my wire nuts because I'm now I'm going to have four conductors here, four conductors here, uh, and so I'm going to want to change that and I'll probably use reds. So what I'll do is I'll start with uh, this here black. Let's get the white one out of the way. And I'm just going to take my black lead here and run that through. I got the, the power is off. The, the power is off at the breaker. Nothing is working here. So we've confirmed that. I'm just going to take this, bring it over to there. Cut that right there. Strip that back on number 14. Right there. Alright. Then we'll go ahead and move this. We'll get my next wire nut ready. Alright. Move this. We're going to introduce this new one here. Now, when you do this, I want to have all the conductors equal. I want them all at the same length sticking out. So I'm just going to straighten some of these ones out rather than just go right on. Now the incoming power is going to be this one. Just in case if you feel like you might have made a mistake or you want to be sure, just try to ground it out. I'll hit this bare wire. If, I, if my power was still on, that thing would spark out at me. And I'd rather have that spark out at me than me inadvertently touch this and get shocked. So that's, that's one of the things you do to protect yourself to make sure that you're not going to get zapped. Okay, so now it's four conductors. I want them all the same. Equal coming out. And it takes a few minutes. You want to get this right so that they all grab good. Okay. Okay, just about there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Twist that, and I'm going to wait till I get a good curl here coming back. Once I know that I've got a good curl coming back, I know that I'm in the wire nut really good. Plus, I'm going to try to pull that. That's a solid connection. Same thing now with the white. Come over here, and I'm just going to put that there, right about like that. Trim that back. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. I'll go with another red wire nut. That seemed to work out well. And if I can, I'll just keep it all together and add the one white and then go in.
I always like the wire nuts with wings on them because that gives you more torque. Okay, you see how that's starting to curl in there on the neutrals? Nice and solid. That isn't going anywhere either. Last one that I need to address is the green. I'll come up here. And that one will probably just use a yellow wire nut. So I'll even reuse the yellow wire nut that was there originally. And I'll trim that back slightly. And there's nothing, there's no insulation to take off. Okay, put these two together. And I'll go with a yellow. You know, I think I could even got by with the uh, the orange on this one. This one was actually small enough. One of those wires is stranded. I think the orange will be fine. Okay, you see that? That's all good. Now it's just a matter of putting everything back into the box appropriately. Now, this switch here is going to go on the right. So, and this switch is shallower than this switch. So what I'll do. I'm going to bury most of this stuff on the right hand side. Uh, I still probably have a little bit of room in the back even on this side too. Hold on. Let's see here. Let's start with the grounds. Let's see if we can't get that buried back there first. I want to push everything in the very far back of the box. Alright, now I'm going to go for this black. Okay. And now the white I'm going to push down and then bring it up. I'm trying to get everything in there tight. Okay, now let's see if I have enough room for everything that I want. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the switch definitely going to be tight. So let's see how well we do with that. Okay, it looks like we've got it. I just got to get my drill on that. Hang on. Let's bring this over here and pan back slightly. And let me go ahead and get my drill bit on. Alright, now Reduce my torque setting down to two or one, the lowest setting. And we'll just sink this up. Right, try to straighten out that switch. Alright, that doesn't look bad. And let's see how that does with the cover plate. We'll tighten that up last. Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks like this could be over just a slight amount, but that's really pretty good right there. Okay, so I'll leave this off for now. I just don't want it to fall. Okay, so that's ready to go there. Now, that's wired up and uh, I'm all set there. That extra wire you remember up here I did have um, extra wire that was in the chase right there Let's see if I can show it to you so I'm gonna pull that down so I can give myself a little bit more room now now that I know that I'm secured on the other end so I'm gonna do that and then get ready to bring get that ready oh uh, you know what I still have to bring another conductor there I still have to bring the switch the light switch so I still got to do that as well all right, so I'll work on that.
Alright, I've got both wires ran through. That box is totally secured. The conductor that's on the right hand side, um, the one right there that I'm pointing to, uh, that one there is the one that's going to go to the light switch. I forgot to bring my red electrical tape, so I'll mark the white conductor with black electrical tape. Now you'll see this coming down the wall to the switch. There's where the switch is going to go. The conductor is already coming out of the wall and I'm ready to put in my cut in box. So I'm going to show you the detail of that right now. I got the cut in box ready to go. I've already put my clamp through the half inch knockout. I'm going to put that on the top and then I'm going to uh, secure that. So I'm just going to feed this through like so and I'm going to cinch that up right there and then push that through the wall. So let me do that. Okay, I'm just on torque setting one. Uh, let me see what that feels like with the screwdriver. Let me just, I just want to move that into the center a little bit better. Okay, now, by having that connection on the back side, I don't have to worry about anything going on. I'm just going to kink that a little bit because I want that to go up. Alright, so let's get this in the wall. Perfectly centered. Okay, now. Alright. Now I want that to be level. Okay. That actually looks pretty level right there. Now I'm going to tighten up these wings and that's going to cinch it in. Try to go equal. Wow. That actually feels good right like that. Now let's see how well I did on the level. In case I need to make an adjustment here. Alright, that's that's really good. If the box was to be moved at all, it could be moved a little bit that way. Let me try loosening up. It's a slight adjustment, if anything. Yeah. It's not giving me much. I'm just going to tighten it down right there. I don't want to strip anything out. It is just a light switch. Okay. That actually feels really good. And let me check that one more time. Yeah, that's good. box is really secure. It's a lot more secure than I thought it was going to feel. Alright, hold on. I'm still not quite happy. Let me loosen that one more time. I'd rather take the time and get it straight while I'm here. Try to rush it and just blow through it. Let me try to get the level right on that. See if I can't get that just the way I want it. Yeah, hold on. Alright, that is good. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to keep my level on it while I'm tightening it down. Go back this side. There we 
go. Now that's that is perfect. Okay. And I don't want to go too tight, and that box is secured. Plenty of drywall there. Just the way I want it. <clears throat> Bring that down a little bit. Now I'm going to be attaching into right here and right here, which is fine. Now, the way to get these wires the way that I want them to go, first thing I need to do is I need to strip back on the insulation. So I'm going to take my utility knife. Now the ground conductor is down the center of the Romex. So what I'm going to do is gently cut just down the center. So if my knife goes through, it's not going to hit the insulation on the white or the black. Now my goal is to expose that uh, ground conductor there so I can pull this back. Let me get this opened up a little bit. And there is my ground. Once I can get a good grip on that, I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to pull to get that insulation up. The, uh, the protector around the conductor there. I want to get that opened up. Okay, now that I've done that, pull that back a little. Okay, now I'm going to hold all three conductors while I grab the insulation. Try to pull it down. I'll pull that right out. diagonal side cutters to break that out. Okay, there it is right there. I'll just grab my diagonal side cutters and I'll just trim that. Let's see, I'm going to put those. you have to be careful that you don't nick any of the wires that you just put in there. Okay, so all that's good. Now, I'll even leave them this long. I won't even trim them out. The length is fine. So, I'll get my light switch ready. Now, on my, uh, on my white, that one is going to be the power going back. Okay, so that one there, what I'm going to do is I, I am going to trim that back. All right, let me get my switch to figure out how I'm going to put those through. I've got my light switch here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an existing wire that's on here. I'm just going to pull that off. I don't need that. Alright, so these here are solid conductors, so let me do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip that back about that much. And I'm going to put a little circle in there like so. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these conductors onto here and I'm going to follow the, uh, the run of the wire. Now, and then I want to install this so that this up is on and the down is off. So I'm not sure which way this particular switch is. I'm going to confirm that with my meter. So what I'll do is I'll put my meter on continuity and I'll just confirm which way is up. Make sure I put it in the right way. Okay, so the meter is on continuity, so if you touch these two leads, the meter will make a sound. So right now, the switch is in the off position. That's the on position, that is the off position. So the green conductor just needs to go off on the left-hand side. 
uh, in order for me to do this. Okay, so I might as well even do the, the green conductor first. So I'll take the green conductor, give myself a little curl, and you always have to put it on the way that you s tighten the screw so that it doesn't unravel when you tighten it. So it goes on like this, keep it nice and snug, tighten that up, and that will tighten onto the screw. Make a phone call. There's my green. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the black and the white. Now the white, the way I like to do my switches, I like to have the power, if I have a choice, I like to go power in the top and then out the bottom. So I know that the switch is going installed this way, so I'm going to put the black conductor where the power is incoming on the top. The screw is turning to the right, so I want this to go up. Like that. That way it is absolutely the way it needs to be when you tighten that down. It's tightening with the screw. Before I do the white conductor, because that's going to not be a neutral, that's actually going to be traveling with 110 volts, I'm going to identify that with black electrical tape. So what I'll do is just take that and indicate that that is no longer a neutral like this. So I'll do this at both ends, indicating that this is now going to be controlling the switch. So I'm going to do it just like that. Okay. Now, let me go ahead, put the traveler wire. It's no longer a neutral. The color is neutral, but now this is all a traveler wire from the switch. So I'm going to put that here. Get that on there. All right, that's nice and tight. Everything's good. Now, the way I want to put these wires is I'm going to put them down. I'm going to curl them up. I'm going to have them go to the top of the box and then back down so that they're kind of forming in a, like a, an accordion. And then I'm going to push in. Let me try to make that a little bit tighter. Hold on. Okay, in like that. And then I've got plenty of room here to put all that together. There's that final product, what that's going to look like. Let me get my... Uh, this was an old switch, so I actually had to dig out some old screws here. Uh, put the backer on there. Okay. And let's start screwing this in. Yeah, there's one. switch nice and straight. Okay. I don't like to tighten things down with the drill. I like to tighten things down with my hand. That gives me a good feel for how tight things are. Let's see how well I did on my level. Okay, that looks great. Alright, so it's off right now. I'm going to leave that off for the moment. Okay. We're all set over there. We're all set here. My last connections are now going to be up here. Okay, I've got this thing wired in and I before I put the light fixture on, I want to test everything out. I've turned the breaker on, and power should be on right now. Now, I want to verify my voltage and that everything is correct. So I'm going to take my meter, and let's see here. Okay, I'm getting power on everything, but I should only have power on that black one. Uh, let me go to uh, voltage AC, 
and see if I have, this ground here is doing nothing. This ground should actually be grounded. Okay, there's nothing on the neutral, nothing on the traveler wire. And let's see if I can stab in down here. Uh, right there. Okay, so there's 120 volts there. So that's exactly what there should be. I'm going to turn the switch on. Now, this should have 110 volts on it to neutral and to ground. And there's 119 volts. And this way, 120 volts. So we're good. We're good from our traveler wire to neutral and traveler wire to ground. So I know that I am grounded and the neutral is going back uh, to the ground back at the service panel. I'm going to shut the switch off. I'm still hot here and I still have to fool with these wires so I'm still going to go back and um, kill my breaker for now. I'm ready for my light fixture but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off because I have drywall repair here and it's going to come out here and I don't want to get the new fixture with any drywall repairs on or anything like that. So what I'll do is I'll wire nut off this traveler in case the switch gets thrown and I'm just going to tuck the wires out of the way. Uh, but the pretty much I'm ready to go for a light fixture at this time can now control from that new switch location which is uh, once the drywall repairs get done will be really nice. Okay so now I'm going to show you the conduit run that I did behind the wall here traveling up coming across that way. Alright so I'm going to turn my flashlight on so you can see it. This is where I ran half inch EMT. Okay here's the chase and there's my new run right there and then I just went up and then uh, just turned into the wall there at a 90 degree turn right way up there so that's basically it they used flex but I noticed that the flex kind of collects a lot of dust so I'm hoping that with the half inch EMT it'll be a little bit cleaner and that came out pretty well there so that's inside the chase now I'll show you what that looks like uh, up here on the other end uh, okay so that's what it looks like coming out so I just used a, uh, a collar on there just to hold that so that that um, half-inch conduit wouldn't go through. I'll see if I can put a little bit of uh, filler in there in that hole there because I know that that's going to be um, that's the return air duct so I'll try to seal that up a little bit tighter than what it is. Then that uh, flex, uh, not flex, but that Romex that comes across it comes across the ceiling here comes to this point which is right there comes across comes down into the to this fixture the new box and then the then another conduit another conductor rather comes through those same holes right there and right there and then that one goes down to the switch switch is all set it's just off right now and um, I just got to do some drywall repairs so that's my next step in this project. Okay, I'm now prepping this drywall to put the uh, uh, to put the holes and put them back. So the first step that I'm doing here is well, I put these plates on here, which is going to protect those conductors and back. So in case I make a mistake, I make I put some blue tape here where my studs are located. And I indicated like on this side where the plate is, there's not enough meat to grab, so I wrote the word no, no here because the plates are too close. But I wrote down here, okay and okay, as long as it's within uh, one inch over. I put, and now I've cut up these blocks of wood, which are four inches by seven inches, and I'm putting those for something that I can screw into on the, on the drywall. Now on this wall one here, I'm going to put one here at the bottom and one here at the top. So 
So let me show you how I do that. I got inch and five eighths drywall screws here, and I'm going to put the wood block about like that. Go in right about here. Make sure your fingers are clear because it stick the nail uh, the screw sticks out a little bit. Okay, when you pull the screw down, it should be just below the paper, so you can put a little mud on that to bury your screw holes. And let me go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so then when I go ahead and put the drywall here back, I'll put one screw here, one screw here, and that will anchor this piece here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put the one in at the top. Okay, one more. got to be below so that way you can get the, the mud over it to cover that screw. Okay, this one needs to go in just a little bit more. There it is. Okay, these look alright. This one can go in just a tad more. You have to have enough meat for the glue to stick too. You don't want it just right on the surface. You want it somewhat recessed. This one's a little bit too much on the surface. Pull that in slightly. And that one too. I got a half inch of drywall here to work with. Okay. Now, my next step is going to be to take. All right, let me just pound this in a little bit. Alright, now to prep that drywall. What you want to do is you want to take a utility knife with a nice sharp blade and you want to cut at a slight 45 degree angle here like this. I cut this with a drywall saw, so it's a really rough edge. Now I'm going to taper this one all the way around, and then the piece that goes in here, I'm going to taper that one as well. So they're both going to get tapered. Then I'm going to screw it in. Now normally, when you do this, you want to use uh, paper to make up the seam. That way if there's any movement in the walls, you won't have a crack. But Okay, there's the first piece going back in. I got two screws in it just to hold it. I still got to put two more screws in and then I'm going to put a couple of nails here, here, and one here. Uh, I could put screws, but I'll just put nails because they're just a little bit flatter. So I got to put another screw here. These have to be screws, they can't be nails here because I'm not going into studs, I'm just going into that wood blocking that I put in. Okay, so that's all good, recessed. Now those plates that I put in to protect those wires, they kind of bow out the, uh, the drywall a little bit. So I'll still uh, probably have to do some texturing here. These are, these are ring shank nails. These are inch and five eighths ring shank drywall nails. Now that's a no. This one here is okay within one inch, so I'm going to put that one right about there. Now, if I even if I made a mistake, it wouldn't go in because of the plate. That really secures that drywall up. That's a no. 
Over here is a yes within one inch. So I can put a couple in here. Basically, that's the uh, process, and I'm going to dress up the other ones just like that. And I still have to do uh, that hole there, plus I've got that hole over there to do. I've already put the uh, grill back on. I bought four new screws for that. Those were uh, five, I, I, instead of going with the quarter inch head, I went with five sixteenths inch hex head self-tapping sheet metal screws. So that was a breeze to put on. Uh, so that's done. And I already got the uh, cover plate on for the um, for the outlet. That's all set. And oh, by the way, I mark everything. And when I know my breaker numbers, I mark them. This one's breaker number nine. So whenever I touch something with when the service panel has the breakers labeled, I always want to label what breaker is feeding the source of power. Okay, so that's it for now. Just give you an update. Okay, I've got all the. Uh, drywall holes patched with the drywall that I cut out screwed in and I have cut with the utility knife to make, make it nice and straight I did that on all of them so if you go around all the corners you'll see that I've I'm ready for basically all right, ready just to for give mud. you an update um, on where I'm at with this uh, project I did not like the way that the I, I could still see the seams after the um, 20 minute quick set had uh, dried out and I didn't like that so what I did was is I've um, skim coated the uh, the ceiling and also the um, the wall right there and I also purchased another can of the um, spray on texture because this is just a small patch job so once I do the uh, knockdown texture uh, on the ceiling and the orange peel hopefully it'll blend in a little bit better because um, I, I really this is this stage is important because once the paint goes on um, whatever imperfections are there will still show through so I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible so anyways that's the update and that's it for now okay here is the final product for the light fixture installed the ceiling has been uh, textured and painted and uh, came out pretty good um, you can see the wall repair here has all been uh, painted and the wall decoration has been put back on there's the, the brand new light switch right there I have it identified with the uh, panel breaker number that's uh, feeding the uh, power and here's the Right, and there it is on. These brand new CFLs are pretty good. You can see that it's like instant on, it's like no delay or anything. Um, and that's the uh, final product. And I hope you have uh, enjoyed that video. Here is the repair of the ceiling over here. Can't really see it that well here, but it blended in pretty good. All right, thank you.